permanently and irreparably damaged by our presence. One of the reasons not to defect was, as you can see, I was living in relative affluence. Who the hell in, in, in a normal mind would defect and do what? To be abused by your media? To be called McCarthyist and fascist and paranoid? Or to drive a taxi in New York City? What for? What the hell for should I defect? To be abused by, by Americans? To be insulted in exchange for, for my effort to bring the truthful information about impending danger of subversion? As you can see, I was living in quite a comfortable conditions next to swimming pool where Indians were not allowed, by the way. I was highly paid expert in propaganda. I had my family. I was respected by my nation. My career was cloudless. The third reason, how to defect with the family. To defect with the baby and the wife would be virtual suicide because uh, according to law, that hypocritical law which I quoted before, the Indian police will have to hand me over back to the KGB, and that will be the end of my defection and probably my life. Again, I cannot smuggle my wife because she was not quite sure what, what I was doing. She was not that idealistically involved, and she was definitely not in, in, in the total picture of what I was doing for the KGB. She would be shocked if I, if I uh, you know, put her in my van and, and drive her to an American embassy or elsewhere. That would be a greatest danger. So again, I had to defect in such a way that my defection would look as simple disappearance. And there were many cases like that when the Soviet agents simply disappeared, either killed in action or thanks to their curiosity and, and their close contacts with radicals. Some of them were killed by the Marxists, by the way. It happened in many African countries when the Soviet KGB were killed by Africans themselves. Not because they hated Marxism Leninism, but because they were simply trigger happy bunch of unruly characters. If you give them a machine gun, they will shoot. And some of the Soviets obviously were not careful enough to protect themselves. And they got into embarrassing situations when they were shot at the crossfire between factions of, of so called liberation movements. Anyway, so I, I decided, as I said, to study the uh, counterculture. I decided this probably would be the best way to disappear. I socialized with characters like this on the left. You see, he's a barefoot American hippie. Uh, it took me quite a long time to study exactly what they were doing and how to mix with them. But eventually I did it. Most of Indian newspapers carried my picture and promise of 2,000 rupees for information about my whereabouts. But they were looking for the wrong person because they obviously tried to stop a young Soviet diplomat in white shirt and tie, and th this is how I looked at the time of defection. Nobody could possibly think that the Soviet diplomat would be as crazy as to join a bunch of hippies. That's you. Tra yes, travel yeah. India and smoke hush. So I made it literally a, a, almost like a Hollywood-style uh, detective story. Uh, from under the nose of the KGB in Bombay airport, I landed a plane and I flew to, to Greece, where I was debriefed by the CIA. That's basically most, th that's all for, for my okay, we can slides. Turn the, we can turn off the projector, then. that's very interesting. Well, you spoke several times before about ideological subversion. That is a phrase that uh, I'm afraid some Americans don't fully understand. When uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? Ideological subversion is, is the process which is legitimate, overt, and open. You, you can see it with your own eyes. All, all you have to do, all American mass media has to do, is to unplug their bananas from their ears, open up their eyes, and they can see it. There is no mystery. There is nothing to do with espionage. I know that espionage intelligence gathering looks more romantic. It sells more deodorants through the advertising, probably. That's why your Hollywood producers are so crazy about James Bond type of, of, of thrillers. But in reality, the main emphasis of the KGB is not in the area of its intelligence at all. According to my uh, opinion and opinion of many defectors of my caliber, only about 15% of time, money, and manpower is spent on espionage as such. The other 85% is a slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, active in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. 
What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result, the result you can see, most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind. Even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid of society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of, the, uh, of the United States society. And yet these people who've been programmed and, as you say, in place and yes. who are favorable to an opening with the Soviet concept, mm -hmm. these are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply because the psychological shock when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social justice means in practice, obviously they will revolt. They, 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 will, uh, they, they will be very unhappy, frustrated people. And the Marxist-Leninist regime does not tolerate these people. Uh, they, obviously, they will join the links of dissenters, mm -hmm. dissidents. Yes. Uh, unlike in present United States, there will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, here you can, you can get uh, popular like uh, Daniel Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand, and uh, it will be the greatest shock for them, of course. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually, it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization.